Hello, welcome. This is Dr. Hisham Saeed. Uh, in this lesson, we'll learn about project risk management, uh, and of course, in the context of uh, construction projects. Uh, we'll learn here about uh, risks are typically you typically see in in uh, in project uh, in construction projects. Uh, be before that, we'll explain what's generally risk and the different approaches to deal with risk. So, kind of driving principles from the overall field of risk management. Um, and then we'll project these in a unique environment of construction um, and identify the different types of risks and their allocation in a construction project. So what is risk? It's an uncertain event that, uh, that relates or occurs and it happens to have an effect on your uh, project goals or objectives. So typically in construction, you care about minimizing, the, delivering the project with the least cost, highest quality, and uh, the short, du shortest time or duration. Now things can happen and you can uh, have risky events or uncertain events can, that can cause cost overruns or reduce in poor quality or delay your project. Uh, and, and in this case, you have to try your best to control such risks and have a plan to deal with such uncertain events. So risk comes stems out of the deficiency of information. Whatever we do, we don't have all the information we need to get into a construction project. So you always have deficiency of information. You do your best to get the information as much as you can. So you go visit the site, you study the plans, you do all what you can to reduce that deficiency of information, but still you will have some kind of information that's missing, and even you don't know you're missing. Um, so you need a systematic process to manage such uncertainty and lack of information. And that's what called uh, risk management, and we'll see that. So let's uh, try first to manage something you have to quantify it. And the general way to quantify a risk is by quantifying the two components that define a risk. Uh, it's the occurrence probability and the consequences of such a risky event. So we'll explain that by this example here. If you imagine you have the city that has a demand of population 1,000 people, and then you have the, a source of water, and you're delivering water from the source to the demand by pipeline. And the pipeline has a probability of failure uh, of 5%. Let's, fall, let's think of it like the probability of an earthquake uh, where a fault of the earthquake will break the pipeline or any other similar event. Um, so the supply is equal to the demand and there is a probability of failure of the pipeline. Now what's the risk of water short shortage in this case? Now following the formula shown here, a risk can be quantified by multiplying these two things, the probability and the consequence of uh, this is a risky event. In this, our case here is the probability of water shortage times the consequence of the water sort shortage. Not having water, this means that 1,000 people will be thirsty and their probability of 5%, so that translates into a 50. Now, what's the unit of that? It should be 50 people. But what's the meaning of that? Uh, it, it, it doesn't have really uh, sensible meaning, meaning in some way. You can think of it like on average that you will have uh, 50 people without water in such a system. Now, is this true? Like in every in a, in a moment of time, you will have 50 people thirsty? No, because at moment of time, if the pipeline fails, you will have a thousand people thirsty. But considering the probability of such event, that's a way to quantify risk: is that 50 people will be thirsty, or you just can say you, you just mention just 50 as a value. Because what happens is you compare that value to other values that quantify risk under a different kind of system configuration or it's a different plan. So in this case here, instead of dealing with only one source of water uh, and one pipeline, we're dealing with two. So e any one of the two uh, water sources will satisfy the demand of 1,000 people, and each one of these pipelines has a 5% uh, failure. So what's the risk of water shortage in this case, if we think about it, the probability of water shortage now is dependent, it's kind of conditional probability, 
So now it's kind of 5% times 5%. So both events of failure have to happen. Uh, so now you're reducing your risk from 50, like we've seen before, to 2.5. Another way of dealing with such a risk of water shortage is dealing with only one pipeline, but providing another water source that has no probability of failure in some way, significant or sensible uh, probability of failure. So in this case, P1 and P2, but this water source, the well, can only uh, satisfy the demand of 500 people. So now what's the risk of water shortage in this case? If you think about it, the, there is a failure of the whole system to fail in providing 1,000 people uh, with water. The, this probability is 5%. But if this happens, the 5% probability, not all the demand uh, be uh, unsatisfied, actually only half of it. So what's the uh, risk of water shortage in this case? Uh, if you think about it, the failure of the system is 5%, but if this happens, only 500 people will have uh, no water. So it's 0.05 times 500, so now your risk is 25. So in the first case, with only one pipeline, we have seen the risk is high, 50. With two pipelines, what we call the redundancy here, you have 2.5. And then here you have 25 with an, a backup source of water, but it's not sufficient to uh, provide water for everyone. So how to deal with risk? Risk is part of the business. You can't run away from it. And this is what we tell our kids. If you're going to cross the street, there's risk of being hit. So we don't tell them don't cross the street. We tell them cross the street after looking left and right, right? So you have to deal with the risk. There is no running away from it. If you, if you are in this business, in construction business, uh, the way you deal with risk is, you can think of it, uh, how you react to the risk. Uh, is it a reactive approach or a proactive approach? So reactive is you're taking actions uh, when the risk happens, but proactive is you take risks before the risky events happens. So for example, the water source example we've seen a reactive approach is to provide a water source backup, but a proactive approach would be building two pipelines. So when one fails, the other one will be up, so reducing the failure of probability in this case. So risk management can be a, a mix of both. There is no one uh, uh, is truly superior over the other. It depends on the case, and risk management helps you actually to identify which one should be used. So um, the objective of risk management here is to uh, increase the probability um, and uh, impact of positive events and decrease the probability and impact of negative events. And this happens by first you plan your uh, risk management approach, you identify risk, you do uh, uh, risk analysis here, either qualitative or quantitative, um, and uh, and then you uh, plan your responses to such risks, and then you repeat the cycle again. So we'll see the first three major steps here. Uh, the risk management plan, the, th the first step is just setting the play kind of play field. So you, you define different terms, you budget for how much money you would like to invest in backup systems or redundancy, uh, the timing when, you do such planning and who's involved in that, the rules and responsibilities. And then the important thing is how you're going to assess the different risks. So especially if you're going to do the risk analysis, qualitative or quantitative. So kind of you're defining, you're setting the play field and setting the rules to follow when you manage project uh, risks. For example here, defining the probability and impact of risks, you can kind of like I'm an, an, an educator, I use rubrics to grade my students. So it's the same, you use rubrics to quantify the uh, impact of risky events and also quantify the probability of such risks. So you can quantify here the cost part of it, the time and the service, and the probability here of their occurrence uh, in, term, in terms of likelihood. So this kind of be like a rubric, you can think of it as a rubric to grade the risky events you have. 
Once you do that, you plan your risk management approach, then you identify risks. Um, and here it's basically kind of uh, uh, thinking and brainstorming about your uh, darkest dreams. What would go wrong in a project? So you have to identify the potential risks. You need to think about who would be assigned such a risk. And then like from the project part, is it the owner, the architect, or the... Uh, uh, the contractor, and then what would be the possible approaches to handle this risk of responses? Reactive, proactive, and then we'll learn other other ways or other approaches or point of view to reacting to risks. How we identify the risks? There are many, many ways by just sitting ourselves and brainstorming or with others, uh, interviewing experts who will be able to assess, help you assess. Or there is a Delphi technique, so I would recommend that you read about it. It's basically multiple rounds of questionnaire interviews to reach a consensus about um, the different risks that you will see in a project. Um, in, in construction, uh, you, you, you would say that all risks initially are rightfully assigned to the owner because it's the, pro the owner's project. So it's the owner's building and it comes with this as a whole package. You, you bought the land, you're going to build a building on it, so you have to, to own everything related to that. But what happens in construction is, as an owner, you assign these and you say, tell the contractor, you take on the risk of building the building. I took on the risk of budgeting it and all of that, but I want to assign to you the risk of building it. Now the contractor would say, right, I can take that risk, but I have to price it. So contractors price risk. They don't kind of reject it and say that's too risky. I can take risky projects, but I have to price it accordingly based on the risks out there. So when you assign risks, you need to think about does this party who will be assigned the risk is competent enough to assist the risk? And then do they have the experience and the tools to control and minimize the impact and probability of such risk? So in class when we meet, we will have this brainstorming that's kind of a very uh, is, is a, a schematic of a typical project you have a, a building or a facility under construction you have the construction site you have workers equipment material storage you have suppliers and vendors providing material to you and then there's the surrounding environment so you have to think about what possibly can go wrong on all of that so you identify the risks and then also you assign it to a party think of uh, how who would be the best party, the architect or the contractor or the owner, to handle such uh, risk? And uh, when you do that, I will give you kind of a hint here. When you come think about the risks fall in such uh, four buckets. So the rest can be physical risks related to the physical uh, site and the building or the facility. Uh, capability related risks, so risk related to the failure of the different parties or players of the project. Economic risks, it comes from the project itself or the economy around the project. Uh, and political and societal risks, so things are related to the uh, political system uh, or the society around the project. So we'll do that in class. And then after you identify the risk, you perform uh, risk analysis. So based on the scales that you set uh, as the tools for you to use, now you use them for every risk you identify, you start assigning. This is from the cost perspective, it's a significant costly event, or from the time perspective, it's a minor time impact. Uh, and also you assess the probability here. Once you do that for every risk, now you start plotting them in the probability uh, chart here, the matrix. So for, pro for, for probability consequence here, matrix, for probability you have very low, low, medium, high, very high probability, and kind of similar scale for consequence. Now once you start plotting these risky events, for example, A and B are risks that you identified, um, thinking now which one is more risky or which one uh, is more severe for you. Uh, but why you need to do that? Because you have to pay attention to the most risky events. So which one here is more risky? Think about it. Another question, 
for B and C now as risky events, which one is more risky, C or B? So for the first one, A and B, I would say A is more risky because it's high probability, very high consequence versus very low probability and medium consequence for B. So A for sure is more risky than B. But comparing between B and C is a little hard because C is medium probability but very low impact compared to B, which is medium impact but very low probability. So it's kind of almost, there. you can think of it like overall, they're both at the same risk scale. And this is what, when you analyze risks, you compare them relative to a scale that combines both probability and consequence in that matrix chart. So the green here is low risk rating, uh, yellow is kind of the diagonal, and of course the highest risk rating is when you have very high probability with very high consequences. So the, uh, the risk increases in this way. This is just an example from the U.S. Federal Highway Administration that kind of summarizes the process for risk analysis. And once any risky event they identified falls within the red, this means that they have to pay really close attention in managing such a risky event. How you manage such a, 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 risk, a risky event, how you handle it, we learn about proactive, reactive, but a more detailed way of thinking about that is uh, risk responses. So you can avoid the risk, meaning that you can cancel this part of the project or you know, take away uh, that construction method that can generate such a risk. So you run away, basically. Accept the risk, meaning that that's fine. I can take that. I can swallow it. Uh, but then I have to set some kind of contingency fund or a backup system to, to uh, deal with it if it happens. So that's the acceptance. And then miti mitigation is we try to proactively here uh, reduce the probability of the risk. So you say that, all right, I will do my best to set a safety system or program in place, you know, put things, measures to reduce the probability of such risky event to happen. And the last thing is, you know, I will move forward, but I will give the responsibility of handling the risk to someone else. So the transfer uh, approach here, which we'll learn more about it in the next lesson. One way of transferring risk is through insurance and surety bonds. So we'll learn about that in the next lesson. But until then, take care of yourself and those around you. Uh, I will see you later. Bye.